And this is the blank slate for the big, beautiful custom bunk beds. I'm going to show you how to make these, I'll show you some tools, some tips, some installation techniques, and some details to help you customize your own big, beautiful bunk beds. That's what this video is all about. I hope you'll stick around. Just want to pin it down a little. Quick level tip. I'm setting the ledger board here. And what I want to do is put even pressure across the level because I'm working by myself. So once I get my mark registered down there, I get it level or horizontal on this end with the bubble between the lines. I put even pressure from the middle of the level onto it and then reach left. Ride my pencil right along it. And put a nice light mark on the wall. It's easy for the level to get away from you. Also, unless you're going to paint the room later, I've put a little blue tape to cover the aluminum of the level. level. This is 3M blue tape. It went on easily. It's painter's tape. If you don't, the aluminum is going to mark up the paint. If you do, the tape won't mark up the paint. Okay, now time to get that ledger board on. I've got the ledger board into the wall framing with number 10 by 3 spats multi-material screws way better than your average drywall screw. Also, the overall length of our loft bed against the wall is 80, which means I've shortened this double the thickness of the material we're using. So if you were using 2x, for example, you would shorten this board from 80 to 77. We're using 5 quarter material. Let me see if I can do this math. That's an inch and an eighth five quarters of an inch. So from 80, I've shortened it an inch and a quarter. 80, 79, 78, three quarters, I did it! So that when we put the band joists on, our overall footprint stays at 80. I'm going to set this screw and I'm going to put some more screws in and that's going to be what you watch next. Woo! I made it through! That's good. What I'm doing here is I've got my level to register level on this. I've got a temporary post here and I've got a clamp to hold it all together. The one move that might have been difficult to see is compression. This is on carpeted room so there's carpet and carpet pad that compresses. I want this to be dead level as built. So what I'm doing is I'm giving my temporary post some compression, reading the level bubble. And when it's level, clamp it all together. That way I can count on this staying where I put it, no joints opening up, everything remaining true throughout the whole process. I've preset some screws in my front band. This is the overall length of the loft bed along the wall, 80, and I'm going to flush it up with the end of the band because I've got a tool pouch on. I can put some, just like the level, put some even pressure straight back, then easy reach, I'm talking, so I want to make sure I'm flush. I don't want to go back and fix this later. That's nice, right there. My five quarter by eight box. I've measured out my screws, so they lay out uniformly right here. I pre-started them. Now all I have to do is put them in place and flush everything up. That's a NASA. That's a very, very NASA. I say that, that joke used to make my daughter laugh when she was little. 
I don't think it's going to make you laugh. It might make you think I'm crazy. It might not be wrong. Next step out of the workshop is to go cut and make the three-ply posts from our eastern white pine five-quarter. But before I go do that, before anything else gets locked together, it's going to be a good idea to square up this box. And the best way to do that is to pull diagonals. So I'll tuck the tape in the corner over there. I'll come to this end of the tape over here, reading the same side of the blade that butts against the wall. And when that diagonal and this diagonal, do I sound farther away? Are the same, the area of the bed platform is square. What I'm working on here is what I call one of the pieces of resistance of this bunk bed design, and it is the three ply post. I'm going to show you two of them right now. That's the outside ply. I dog eared it or clipped the corners. of the top of the outside post. The inside is a by four. And then the third ply will be another by six. Very careful to make sure that I have an inch on each side when I fasten. And I fasten with number eight by two inch screws every 16 inches or so. And I only fasten two plies together out here in the workshop. I'll put the third piece in place, in place. In Latin, that's in situ. Not in situate, that's in Massachusetts. In situ. So I'll put it in place, in place. God, could I talk more? Next, after I've inserted the box into the post, got downward pressure, I get them plumb in this direction and this direction, and then I'll fasten from the back in a star pattern. Oh, I forgot to do it this way. That's okay, because it's awesome! Star pattern right here with two inch screws. Center. The third ply, the back piece. This is glued. Where is it? Got me some Gorilla Glue in there, wood glue. I popped two three inch screws at the bottom. I'm going to fasten the field with two and a half inch finish nails, 15 gauge. And then I'm going to clamp this all together between the fasteners, the glue, and the straight downward compression on our screw together connection, which is also screwed here. This isn't going anywhere. Oh, one more thing. Combination square. I want to make sure that my first ply and my third ply are coming around in a perfect square. So I take this, I line it up all money train, get it where it's going, and send her home. I want a one inch reveal from the bottom of my bottom box up to here to reflect the same one inch reveal I have over here. I can measure, I can mark, I can do all kinds of stuff, but what I've decided to try instead is a guide block. I've got a layout line here you can't see, I'm marking everything very lightly. I want to minimize sanding as much as possible. So what I'll do is I'll line these up like this. I'll show you too. Get them on my mark. I've preset screws back here so I'm on layout. In this way I can see the line I know I'm flush, I know I'm going to be the exact same distance all the way around, 
Now, double double check, super square. I'm gonna set these two screws. And that's how no fuss, no muss is meant to be. There's only really, unless I use biscuits or a domino or something, one place to connect this, and it's out here. So I'll dump that back in my pocket. I'll take and put this like this, and this like this, and then for a little added, oh that's nice, right there. That's not going to close up any tighter or be any miter. Ha! See what I'm saying? See what I did there? See what I did? That's nice. Then, I'll take ye old finish nailer. I suppose I could use a brad nailer. And give her a couple pops. My weapon of choice for positioning my now single unit but three pieces of top cap is my combination square. Oh, that's nice. Ladder layout. There's no one right thing to say here because everybody's bed is probably going to be a different height. You'll have more room to pitch the ladder, whatever it is. So I'm just going to give you a few of the general things that I did for this one. And the very first one, which is my go-to trick for stuff that you kind of have to create right here in the workshop, customized to the piece. And that is a test piece. Long story short, my angle and pitch for my ladder is 12 degrees, made out of a 5 quarter by 8 eastern white pine board. I made a test piece so that my rungs would net out to be 12 inches on center. So I got that, and in the process, let me put this aside, went to my other go-to. Marking is easier than measuring. So what I did is I made a jig. I can ride it up both sides of both ladder rungs. My angle is fixed. It's 12. And a few details. On the first rung, you put the jig on. This is 10 and 13 sixteenths. Flush it up to the bottom of the ladder rail. Mark the bottom of the jig. Slide it up to the line that you just made. Mark the top of the jig and make an X there. Slide it up again. Line the bottom to your line. Mark the top of the jig. And unless something happens in the universe, that should net you out with field rungs that are 12 inches on center, made from five quarter eastern white pine and they are about 16 inches wide. Ladder rung number two, or right and left, or whatever you're calling them, is a mirror image of the first one. So you don't lay it out so that the angles complement each other, long to short and so forth. Rather, what you do is you flip one so your long points meet, like so. I hope that shows up. Then, flush them up. Make sure you're good to go on both ends. These are super sweet. Take your jig and match up your lines and your X's. So now, you don't have to know anything. You don't have to measure anything. We're just marking. Stair treads, or ladder rungs, whatever you want to call them. I've chosen to ease the edge of the front of the rung 
so that it matches the rail angle. 12 degrees. Everything's 12 degrees. Once you determine that, that's a big factor. I made a test piece. I tested it on my rungs. It fit, so I use it to set up my table saw. Got my five quarter pine here. And what I want to make sure that I do is that I don't assemble it a little bit off, sort of in a square allelogram fashion. So what I've done is I've got a guide piece of plywood on top of my table, and I've set the top, this piece, it has a little chamfer on it, flush with the edge of the plywood, the machine edge. I've used my actual shelf as a spacer. So now I can get everything lined up reasonably square so I can fasten it together. All right, I know, I know, Mark. Just screw it together. We get it. Ah, I like it. We set it on 29 inches to the top of the desk. To get this where it's going and to get solid connection to the wall framing, it's easy. All I'm going to do is plumb down from up here where I know the studs are. Make marks along the wall, underneath where the wood will go for the desk. Get this all fastened together. I am building up a five quarter by eight by four pieces wood panel for a desk on our current project. And I'm very excited. I'm using glue, which I guess I should have in the shot. I'm using wood glue, my Porter cable jointer, and some Spax two inch number eight pan head screws to both chemically bond this and mechanically bond this so that when I flip that over, I'm gonna have maybe a fingernail. I gotta sand it anyway. I'm happy with that. I hope your woodworking projects are going well. And if you've got a better idea for this, let me know. I'm gonna get back to it. Fingernail, not bad. Clamps, straight edge, registering off my square side so that I can now clean up this edge with wormy, like squirmy. Also, the piece is upside down. So the face side is down, this cut, should be totally clean where it matters. I'm using my high stainless steel inch and a half putty knife and a little drywaller's trick. I keep the mix nice and fluid and then I take the side of the knife and I roll down a long screed of it. But then I come back and I can pick it all up at once. These seams are so tight, it's barely going in. But the couple things that I think about when I do this is I'm gonna pre-drill and countersink a hole here. I do it with the piece dry fit so I know that my angle going in to the wood is the angle that I want. Then, I'll lay my piece down for a sec, put in my driver tip, Get a number 10 by 3 inch multi-material screw. Get myself right on the line. So everything's already figured out already. I'll just double check that I'm level. I am. And now with a firm grip and I'm not wrestling anything or dealing with an odd pre-drill angle, I can take, hold everything together like this. Gently drive that screw in there, get a nice solid connection, close up all those miters, and keep some awesome leg room for file cabinets and being able to move around without even having to think about it. Man, I love it when stuff works! Woo! One of the drawbacks to my on-site pocket holes 
is some little bit of tear out right there. There is no better solution for that, in my opinion, at least for this version of how I do this, than this. Because I use this in rough carpentry and decks and stuff all the time where it's not really woodworking grade. So all I do is I take my hide, 25 millimeter snap off knife, flex the blade in, and saw. Oh, that's awesome. You can do it over here too. And saw. Not exactly the right word. These imperfections off. The lack of this. Put them in. No fuss, no muss. Set some screws, man! I am keenly aware that my biggest enemy is dark and dust. And I've run into this before, so what I've brought to bear here is a flashlight. Now, I'm going to throw out that the flat eye flashlight that someone sent me is sensational. That's an aside. What I will tell you is this. Because I only have the room's overhead light, it's dim in here. And I really, really need to see if I've got dust built up on here. And dust can come from the air, can come from when we put the slats in above. So I'll put a coat on, I'll sand in between. They recommend 220, I might do 320 just to be extra careful. I'm gonna brush it off physically, then I'm gonna wipe it off with a damp rag, I'm gonna let that dry, then I'm gonna come back with a synthetic bristle brush and apply my second coat of spar urethane and bring this baby to life. That's the job! Why am I yelling? That's what I'm going to do now. Okay, that's what I'm doing now, everybody.